everybody. Happy Fourth of July. Uh, if you're visiting with us, and I know we have a few, my name's Patrick Duncan. I'm the worship pastor here. We're glad to have you with us today. Glad you chose to come out on uh, this beautiful Fourth of July Sunday and worship with us and celebrate our freedom together. Before we begin, uh, would you join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us to come together. And Lord, we thank you for the freedom we enjoy in this country to be able to do this. Uh, Lord, we thank you for, for our church. Uh, and Lord, we thank you for um, everything we know is going to take place today. And, and we just pray that everything we do, everything we say would bring glory and honor to you. And uh, Lord, we celebrate our freedom as Americans, but we celebrate even more than that, our freedom from sin that you paid the price for. Lord, we pray that you'll be lifted up through it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll ask you now to rise for the posting of colors, followed by our national anthem.
let's worship together this morning. Sing this with us. God of our fathers, whose heart we have, leads forth the beauty of us for even our shiny worlds in splendor through the sky. I uh, would venture to say that there's nobody here today would, that would disagree with the fact that our land needs to see revival. Amen. Amen. And God has told us how to do it, right? God has said, if my people who are called by my name, that's us, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land and forgive their sin. What we need today is not more politicians or more laws or more judges. What we need today is a mighty movement of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. My prayer this morning, and I hope you'll join me in this, is that we would see even, even here today, that it might start here today, that we would see the Holy Spirit rise up and break through the walls and beat down the doors and crash through the windows and cover Lawton, cover Oklahoma, cover this nation, cover this world.
listen. Fear has no choice but to bow. Chains have no choice but to break. Shame has no choice but to leave in your presence. Fear has no choice but to bow. Chains have no choice but to break. Shame has no choice but to leave in your So this morning we uh, have some special guests with us whom you've already seen. The Buffalo Soldiers uh, have so kindly come and uh, posted the colors for us today. And uh, I've enjoyed over the last couple of weeks getting to know a couple of these guys. And uh, I didn't know much about them before all of this. Uh, and maybe some of you don't either. So I've asked uh, one of them to come and speak to us today. So I'm going to ask uh, retired U.S. Arm uh, US Army uh, Warrant Officer 4. Tony Washington, who is the president of uh, the Lawton Fort Seal chapter of the 9th and 10th Cavalry Buffalo Soldiers, to come up and just tell you a little bit about uh, what they do in the community. Tony, you come on up. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I've been introduced, but I don't have to say that again. But I want to say on behalf of the Lawton Fort Seal Buffalo Soldiers, well, thank you for inviting us. And I also like to space, say a special thank you to those that honored the service, past, present, and future. And I'd like to also make a note that these color guards that you see here, between all five of us, as a 150 years of service. <laughs> hey. Thanks again. I'd like to give you a brief overview of the Buffalo Soldiers, because I know a lot of people don't know, and there's a lot that think they know. But I'd like to say uh, they were established shortly after the Civil War. Uh, Congress have uh, authorized a formation of an all-black unit it was going to be derived of four infantry and two cavalries. The infantry was the 38th, 39th, 40th, and 41st, which was consoli consolidated into the 24th and the 25th three years later. The 9th and 10th, who we represent, of the cavalry, was established back in 1866. It was, the 9th was established in Greenville, Louisiana, with the colonel of uh, Edward Hatch. He was the commandant of that regiment. And General, I mean, Colonel Benjamin Grierson commanded the 10th Cavalry in Fort Leavenworth, uh, Kansas. They put this together with mostly former slaves, because after slavery, it wasn't like jobs was opening for those guys. And they want to get a chance to prove themselves that they is American and can be treated as such and wanted to be feeling equal as anyone else. If given the chance, they can show that they can do the same and be a part of this American society that we have and that we're growing up with now. 
So to prove themselves, <coughs> they gave them an opportunity to join the, the service, the military service. At that time, they were only getting paid well, $13 a month, but we can't say only, because back then that was a lot of money. They get a chance to serve, they had room and board, if you call it that, with tents. But <clears throat> they got a chance to serve and they got a chance to do things within the military. And part of their assignments were to protect the serve, the stage coaches, the railroads, and actually work on roads and protect against settlers that was moving west at the time, you know, from bandits and from the natives, the hostile natives at that time. But they were protecting the, uh, they also helped derive the telegraph lines. They protect the mail. They were escorts for people that was traveling, settlers that was traveling to the west. But one of the caveats to them being established that they will only be commanded by white officers at that time. They didn't have the army, but they will only be commanded by white officers. But at that time, once again, they were not trained anyway. They were not educated. They could not read or write most of the slaves at that time. At least they didn't admit it. But when they did, because at one time, they would get punished for learning how to read and write. So they weren't that eager to let anyone else know that they can at that time. So um, <clears throat> the officers at that time were kind of reluctant to, to take on this duty as being commanders of this unit because they didn't look the same with their peers. You know, they was, you commanding over former slaves is not looked at as being the command of a regular unit. So a lot of them was, so they had to come with some incentives for those guys. So they offered them extra pay and a, <clears throat> a faster way of getting their rank if they take this job, take this position. Now, one of the other things that happened during the time they enlisted, they enlisted so many, all you had to do is look like you was fit and they were enlisted. That's why we had our first female to actually enlist in the military, which was unheard of at that time. You could not do that. But the way she did it is disguise herself as a man. Her name was Kathy Williams but she enlisted as William Cathy. So it was obvious they didn't do a physical during that time. Because <laughs> they would have known. And she lasted almost two years before she actually got ill and actually seek medical attention. And that's the time they found out that she was a female. And at that time, they uh, immediately discharged her. Because at that time, they didn't want to have egg on their face, letting everyone know that they had an actual female serving because they didn't think females could serve. Now they fought on the battlefield, they assisted in the battlefield, along with maybe their husbands or just being a part of their uh, duties that they wanted to do. But she was the first to actually enlist, and that's the difference between that. No one ever thought that would happen, and she pulled that off, and they didn't, didn't appreciate that when they found out that she was a female. So there. And I'm gonna name some of the significant firsts that we had during that time. The, the regiment also received 23 con Congressional Medal of Honors. No other unit had ever achieved that during that time. We had one Buffalo soldier, Emmanuel Stance. He was the first one to actually receive Congressional Medal of Honor for valor on the battlefield. Because that was the highest award you would get in wartime, was that Medal of Honor. Now, she was the first female, he was the first to get that award, and we had, actually, we had a colonel that was in charge of our first park rangers. Buffalo Soldiers was actually the first park rangers that we ever had, and he was the first superintendent of that time. He was a graduate of West Point, which I will touch on last about Henry Flipper. And, uh, also, to let you know that chaplains that were in the Buffalo Soldiers, they didn't rise up with the Buffalo Soldiers, they were educated elsewhere. But their job was to teach the Buffalo Soldiers how to read and write. Other than fellowship and passing the word, their job was to teach those guys how to read and write. <clears throat> and that's what the chaplain's position was during that time. Now I want to tell you about uh, Lieutenant Henry O. Flipper. 
He was the first graduate of West Point, the first black graduate of West Point. He wasn't the first one to attend. There was two others, but they didn't complete it. He was the first one to actually complete it. And he did very well after dealing with some of the circumstances that he had to go through going for that. But his very duty assignment was right here in Fort Sill. And he helped. He was the mastermind. He designed the engineer for our <clears throat> drainage system that was actually, uh, malaria was coming through that, from that, and it was actually hurting, making people ill, and actually dying from that. He designed a way that it prevented that from happening. And he was, took that as real proud, proud of doing that. And we have a monument in, on Fort Sill that shows that ditch. It's called Flipper's Ditch. And that's a, a tourist attraction when we bring people from out of town here. And they would love to see that. Now, he was, uh, he left here and went to Fort Davis, uh, Texas, where he was later under some force charges. They really didn't like the fact of having a black officer. Because as much as they endured, as much as the accomplishments that they made while dealing with racism and prejudice, they were still showing, wanted to prove that they could still accomplish the mission and do what they need to do and show it with pride. Now they got the name Buffalo Soldiers from the natives as a, on the, as, a part of, as a part of their respect for them, how they fought on the battlefield. And of course, we had a similar look to the Buffalo. <laughs> so that was a no brainer there, but it was still, we, were, we took it with pride as far as being fierce fighters on the battlefield. Okay, uh, that was my brief overview of the, uh, I had to give a short version because I know we're pressed for time, but uh, if you want to know anything else, just let us know and we'd be glad to give you a longer presentation. But we just was happy for the invite and the pleasure having us here and pleasure having a, a pleasure having this opportunity to speak to you. And I'd like to personally thank you from the Lawton Force Field 9th and 10th Hoff Cavalry Buffalo Soldiers. Thank you all for having us. So we're thankful that they've been with us today. It's such a, an interesting uh, piece of our history, especially in this area. Uh, and w as a way to, to show our appreciation for them and also to support what they do in this community, uh, I'd like to ask you if, if you're willing to make a contribution to them at the end of service. Uh, we'd like to just take a, a love offering, and we'll put it in the offering boxes in the back there. But uh, if you're willing to do that, you can write the checks out to the church and just put in the memo line, Buffalo Soldiers, or... Of course, you can put it in one of the uh, envelopes in the seat back in front of you and just write Buffalo Soldiers on there. But we would love to support uh, these guys in the work they do. Right now, we want to recognize all those in the place who uh, have or are serving in the military or have served. Uh, we're in just a moment going to sing the salute to the armed forces. And uh, when you hear your uh, branch of the military's theme song, you rise and you, you let us acknowledge you and honor you. But before we do that, since they'll already be standing, I want to take a moment and anybody up here who has served, uh, go ahead and stand and let us. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So in just a moment, as we st sing, you stand and let us honor you and just um, as a word of warning, uh, the, at, the, at the end of this, we're going to have a big, loud, explosive finish. So y'all just be prepared. Right, choir? <laughs> All right. Salute to the armed forces.
built freedom into every fiber of creation and he meant for us to all be free
Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we, we thank you for this amazing time that we've been able to just celebrate freedom. Thank you for the, the choir, the praise team, and Lord, all that has been done here today to honor you and to honor the heroes of our, of our church and our nation. And Father, as we continue on here, I pray at this point The Lord, everything that we do will still keep our focus on you and your word that you've given us. And Father, we just pray that that we would honor the the freedom that we've been given, not just here in our nation, but Father, the honor that we've been, the freedom we've been given through Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father, if there's someone here today or someone that's watching this live stream, Father, that doesn't know you as their Savior, Lord, that they would come to you today. To, uh, to know that freedom, to understand what it's like to cast off all the, the burdens of sin. And Father, be free indeed. Father, I pray for the message that I'm about to share. I pray, Lord, that it would be not my words that I'm saying, but your words. I pray, Father, that it would be the message that you've given me and not the one that I've come up with. And Father, through all of this, that you can be honored and glorified by the response of your people. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Hey, it's good to see everybody. Man, wasn't that a great great program? Amen. Give the choir a hand again. Good job. And I would like to take just a moment and say to all of you who are serving or have served, thank you. From the bottom of my heart as your pastor, I want to say what an honor it is to get to, to serve you as pastor and know that all that you've gone through, and, and not just you, but your families. As I shared with you before, before I came to Lawton, I, I understood, or I thought I understood the sacrifice of the military because we, we were always talking about it and always up front with them. But the one group that I never really thought much about were their families until I came here to see what the sacrifices the families make. To see what they go through on a, on a daily basis without a loved one around for a year, a year or more at a time. And so to all the families, to you, thank you for what you go through, what you deal with. And again, it's an honor to serve you as, as pastor here at this church. And again, I pledge to you, my servanthood to you as well. Today, I want to share a quick message with you entitled, Call to Freedom. Because can I tell you this, my friends, each one of you here today, all of you watching on this live stream, God has called us to freedom. Amen? Now that call to freedom is not that we're just, we're called, but it's an invite. It's inviting all of us to come to celebrate true freedom because we are a blessed nation, amen, to experience the freedom that we have. But I want to share with you, there's even a greater freedom that Jesus Christ has given us. And that is part of our celebration today is that call to freedom, because freedom, freedom's an amazing thing. And if you've ever been in a point where you don't have that freedom, you know what I'm talking about. And that's why even in this nation, it's the land of the free, and it should be celebrated, amen? Because freedom is, freedom is not given to everybody. And we, sometimes in our nation, if we're not careful, we will take advantage of it and lose the joy of it. And even as Christians, And that's where I'm coming from today. Even as Christians, if we're not careful, we can begin to lose the idea of freedom. We can begin to lose the joy of it, the celebration of it. That's why we call it Celebrate Freedom, because we want to celebrate what we've been given. But friends, can I tell you, every single day in the life of a Christian should be celebration of freedom. Because we have been set free through Jesus Christ. And the call to you today is to celebrate that freedom. The call to you today, if you don't know Jesus, is to receive that freedom. So we are called to freedom. Christians are called to spiritual freedom. And I want to look today, if you will, at three ways, three lives that we can live as Christians if we're not careful. Two of them are not going to be great, but one of them is where Christ has called us to freedom. The first one is life of legalism. 
inside the church, inside the Christian realm, this, is, this, this idea of legalistic mentality. In other words, it's living by a set of regulations of a lot of can't do this and can't do that. And, and it's just there and it's regulations. Can I tell you that not all the regulations, not all of the, the, the legalistic things that we do in the church are all scriptural. If we're not careful, we can take this beautiful freedom that Christ has given us and we can begin to, if you will, put some man-made things into it. And then we can become legalistic about everything that we do. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 15, 9, it says, And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine. In other words, not Baptist doctrine, not other denomination doctrine, but in New Testament scriptural doctrine. He said, they worship me with their, their, their lips, and it's in vain, because they worship me teaching these, with these doctrines the commandments of men. In other words, we take what we think, what we perceive, and we turn it into stuff that we say, okay, this is now what you are to do. And we begin to put a lot of restrictions. My friends, can I tell you today, we are free in Jesus. And if so many times in the church, if we're not careful, we will begin to put our ideas, our philosophies, our preferences into the Word and begin to teach it in the church as something from God when, listen to me, it was never breathed from the mouth of God. And so Paul is dealing, if you will, here with the Judaizers. So in in Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 and 14, I want you to turn there very quickly. Paul is dealing with the, the Judaizers who are saying, okay, this idea of Jesus is, is good. It's kind of a neat thing, but I'm telling you there's something more to add to it. There's something more that you're missing that if you don't add this in, you're going to miss the mark. Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. Let's go ahead if you're able to stand. Let's stand in honor of reading God's word. Verses 13 and 14. This is very important. It says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Father, thank you for freedom you've given us. Thank you for what we have as a nation, but even more importantly, what we have as as your children, as Christians to receive Jesus into our life. Father, guide us now through the rest of this time that we can Perceive from your word what you desire for us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. And in vain they worship me again. Because if we begin to put legalistic mentality into the scripture, we're not truly worshiping. That's why he says that you must worship me in spirit because there is no physical God that we put a manifestation up here on the stage and say, okay, this is the God you worship. He said, you must worship me in spirit, but then he doesn't say just that, but he adds another word and truth. Truth. Now, what does he mean by that? You worship me in spirit and truth. Well, truth is his word, not ourself, not our thoughts on it, not my preferences on it. It's what he wants. So I have to take his word. And if we're here today and we're going to worship God truly, we cannot come in here with our likes and our preferences. We can't come in here and decide, I didn't like how they did this. I can't believe they did that. And they just turned me off. Listen, my friend, that's not worshiping in truth. As a matter of fact, if that was your mentality coming to church today, if that was your mentality watching this service today, the Bible says you're worshiping in vain because it's not really worship. Because you ought to be experiencing the Holy Spirit and not the commandments of men, not what we think is right. So we see this, it's again, it's the can't do this and can't go there and can't wear this, can't see this. And and it's a lot of can'ts that we restrict people. And basically we call it, if you will, negative goodness. You're being good by not doing anything. And if you do these things, then you can't be good. Well, that's a negative goodness. It's only good if you're not doing something. If you're really, according to a legalist, if you're, not, if you're enjoying life, you're not serving Christ. You've got to be walking around with a 
frown on your face and you got to walk around as a sourpuss and tell everybody what they're doing wrong and how dare you and if that were me he said that's in vain so it's a negative thing the second one is it opens up for pride it opens up a place for pride if we get legalistic in the church Man, there's a, a wide open ability for it to be about me. And boy, how good I am and how you can't do this. And if, if you do that, you're not like me and you're not like us. And, and we can't be together here. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Luke 18, 11, if you'll remember the story that Jesus was telling, he says the Pharisees stood and prayed. And what did he say? With them, prayed thus with himself. Now, like, have you ever noticed that? The Pharisees stood and prayed thus with himself. In other words, he was the only one talking and because of his heart, he was the only one listening. Amen? There's a whole lot of times, I think, in the church, if we're not careful, we can pray thus unto ourselves. But here's why he was praying thus unto himself, because it says, God, I thank you that I am not like other men. I thank you that I'm your gift to the world. I thank you that I'm your gift to you. You thought of yourself and needed something precious, and you made me. <laughs> Nothing else like me exists. Thank you. Thank you that I'm not like other men, like an extortioner. I, I don't do that. I'm, I'm un, not unjust. Or even, and he went to, and here's where we get in trouble at the church. He even started naming names. Amen. It, it, it would be like me standing up here saying, let me tell you about, hmm, and picking you out and start saying, I'm glad I'm not like you because you are the worst. But he said, thank you that I'm not like that guy. And my friend, this is the legalistic mentality. And if we're not careful in the church, this is the way we can become. We can begin to quit worrying about saving or going out and presenting Jesus to save people. And we begin to judge them and thank God that we're not like them. And how dare we have anything to do with them. So we look and we see that it, it tends to make room for pride. But this is the life of legalism. Very quickly, the second one is the life of license. Now, let me tell you, this is the other extreme of freedom. This is the other extreme of living the Christian life, and they're both not good. This idea of life of license is that other extreme. That, if you will, it's, a, it's, it's almost a perversion of liberty. It takes that which Christ gave us, and it perverts it. And so this life of license, living any way we want, thinking there's no effect on our relationship with God, that I can do anything, because nothing has an effect on me. We can live any way we want. We can talk any way we want. We can say anything we want. And we're warned against that because the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2, 16, it says, act as free men. Absolutely. He says, hey, church, hey, choir, know you're, you know you're free. Act it. Act as free men. Church, act as free people. But not using that freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as a bond slave of God. Don't use it to say, well, I can do anything I want. There is a, there's a word antinomianism, and the, anti, anti, uh, the antinomianism is this. It's people who believe that grace releases us from obligation of observing moral law. I don't have to do anything because I am a Christian. And it releases me from that. And that, that, that is turning, if you will, an opportunity of our freedom into, into the flesh. In other words, I, I think I'm saved. I, my spirit is good. And since my spirit is good, then man, I can treat this body. I can do anything with this body. Whatever it is I want to do, because it has no effect on me doesn't have any effect on my spirit because my spirit and my flesh are two separate things. In other words, it's, as we look here in verse 13, it says, do not use this liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. In other words, not taking it and using it for gross or corrupt passion. 
and this is where we get into it with Christians, is a lot of times we'll say, well, I can act in way I want. And my passions, they're my passions, and they're okay because me and God, man, I can do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want. I can treat people any way I want. I can spread rumors all I want. I can judge people all I want. And it really has no effect on me and God because me and God are okay. But this is, again, that life of license that, that, that we have perverted freedom to have this. It's not that way. As a matter of fact, in Romans 6, 15, Paul even asked this question. He says, what then? Shall we sin because we are under the law, but, but not under the law, but under grace? He says, certainly not. Now, a translation of that from Northeast Oklahoma, boy, like I am, that translation would read this. Can we go about and sin any way we want because we're under grace, not under the law? Are you seriously out of your cotton-picking mind? <laughs> Paul says, absolutely not. You can't go out and continue to live your life any way you want and put a tag on it because I am free. My friends, can I tell you, a Christian cannot, 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 cannot live in sin. Now, we may fall into it. We may fall into sin. doesn't mean we can't sin because I'm here to tell you I'm pretty good at it. Amen? So I can tell you Christians can sin. And without naming names, I can tell you all that many of you are good at it. Oh, don't get mad at me. You know it's true. I just said I'm good at it too, so you're in good company. Amen? You're with the pastor. Amen? Hey, it's okay to say amen on that one. You're not going to hurt my feelings. There you go. There you go. But we can't use this. Because we are good at it, but we can't live in it. And can I tell you, a wise deacon one time, a wise deacon one time told me when I first started my ministry, he said, Pastor, let me tell you, there's a difference of sinning and living in sin. We're all going to sin, but my friends, if you can get into sin and you are knowing you're there, and you're happy being there, and you've been there, and you don't ever plan on getting out, then can I tell you there's something spiritually wrong? As a matter of fact, J. Vernon McGee, an old preacher, one time put it this way. He said, you may fall into a pig pen, but you sure won't stay in it. We know the story of the prodigal son. He got in the pig pen. He was there, but then the Bible says while he was in that pig pen, the Bible says that he came to himself. In other words, he looked around, he realized what was going on, where he was, and he shouldn't be there, and he said, I can't stay here. My friend, that's the way a Christian is going to do. The Holy Spirit of God living that lives in us. Remember, when I receive Jesus as my Savior, the Holy Spirit lives in me, and that Holy Spirit is going to talk to me that holy spirit is going to make it to where i can't continue to do this it's going to be on my mind and i i may i may burn it may burn inside of me as i shared with you last week it may burn inside of us and eventually we're going to come to ourselves we're going to get out of that pig pen why because the holy spirit of god won't let me stay there because my friends can i tell you you have not been given a life of license as a christian the Holy Spirit of God will speak to you the truth and he will draw you with the truth into where he wants you to be. So that's another perversion. Again, you may fall into a pig pen, but you won't stay there. Very quickly, the last one is where God really wants us. That's what we're called to, amen? We're called to a life of liberty. Now, that's freedom from the condemnation of sin. That's not the freedom to sin and not free from the consequences of sin because here's where i think we get it mixed up and here's where sometimes and i think as baptists we kind of uh people kind of attack us because i'll be honest with you can i tell you i'm going to make a public profession here to all of you to all of you to all of you i believe in eternal eternal security of a believer oh now folks that should have gotten a little more than that I'm saying, yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Out of the mouth of a child. Let me say that again. Not as a Baptist, all right? Get that out of here. 
But as, as a Christian, from the Word of God, I believe, here's your cue, I believe in eternal security of a believer. Amen. There you go. Yeah, that did, give a hand. You know why I believe it? Because salvation wasn't anything I earned. It was given to me. If I don't earn it, I can't keep it. Because if I, listen to me, if I was good enough to keep it, I would have been good enough to earn it. But I can't. All I do is receive it as a gift. And God holds me into his hand. And never to let go of me. So I believe in that. But I believe that there are consequences of my sin, even as a believer. Amen? There is now therefore no condemnation, but I believe there's consequences of sin. And we think we're a void of that. We, we don't have to worry about consequences. No, absolutely not. I'm not condemned for my sin, but folks, listen to me. I will suffer for my sin. My family will suffer because of my sin. The church will suffer because of my sin. People that I care for will suffer because of my sin. So there are absolutely consequences of your sin. So be, be sure of that. I want to close out very quickly here. What it means. I found this in, in an article that I read the last couple of weeks from Glenn uh, Gesselbach. And, and what he wrote was basically three, three things that it means to have freedom in Christ, to have liberty. One is seeing things clearly. When I receive Christ and I am set free, I will then have the ability to see things more clearly than I've ever seen them before. In other words, the Holy Spirit will open my eyes and I will begin to see things as God sees them. I will begin to see his word as he writes it. I will begin to see people as he sees people. I will even begin to see the lost world as Jesus sees the lost world. And he doesn't see the lost world as something that he wants to condemn. He sees the lost world as something he wants to save. I'll see things more clearly. As a matter of fact, I've shared with you so many times before. The closer I am to God in his word and his spirit is working deeper in me, the less sense the world is going to make. The world can't make sense to those who are close to Christ. It can't make sense because it, it doesn't fit in his word. But I'll see things clearly. I'll be able to understand things more. I'll see sin as sin. I'll see God's word as life. The second one is knowing what Christ has done for us. Freedom means that I understand that I didn't do this. This basically says that our call to freedom was not free. When I receive Christ in my heart, what it means to live a life of liberty is that I'm going to realize, man, I had nothing to do with my salvation other than receiving it in and, and realizing I'm lost and I need Jesus. And that's it. And I realize that and I see that. And, and you know what happens to me? Whenever that happens, is I, can, I celebrate my freedom. Oh, because I know what he did. I know, I know it wasn't, listen, I know it wasn't that God just said, Harold Gacious, in 1981, at Shelter First Baptist Church, I speak to you, and I speak freedom to you. I speak salvation to you. I give salvation to you. That wasn't how it worked. How it worked was over 2,000 years ago, his son came and he lived on this earth. He was born of a virgin in Bethlehem. He lived and was, uh, lived a perfect life. And then on, on, when the time was right, that he hung on the cross for us. He died a tragic death, suffering on the cross for us. And I know that on that moment... When the world, the clouds grew dark and, and the sun was hid away, I know that Jesus took all the sins of the world and it brought it upon himself. And through that, he died and, and he, he became my sin 
and he became your sin. And we became his righteousness when we received it. And I know that he died on that cross. I know that he was buried in the tomb. I know that three days later, he rose again. I know that he taught and walked amongst the men and all of his disciples. And I know that he ascended into heaven. And I know that one day, that Jesus is coming again. I know that. I see that. And folks, I know he, he didn't just speak it. Man, Christ died for my freedom. He died for it. And we need to know that. We need to understand that. And lastly, we, it means to be free Christ that we love and obey him. I don't do it because I have to. I don't do it because he makes me. Man, I do it because I love him. I know what he did for me, and I, I, I want to obey his word. I know that. Folks, it's, it's kind of like my, my family. I, I, want, I want my family to be taken care of. I want my family to, to be provided for. I want my family to be doing great. Not, and and I, I, I give to my family. Man, I, I strive for my family. You talk to my girls and they tell you I spoil them silly and that's okay. And I don't do it because I'm obligated. Well, that's my, I've got to get up and go to work for my girls and for my wife. I'm obligated to take good care of them. No, I do it because I love them with all my heart. Yeah. And I want, us, I want them to be good. Folks, can I tell you, when we, when we are celebrating a life of liberty... What it means is I'll, I love God. I love God because I know what he did for me. And I'm connected to him. I'm close to him. I, I walk daily with him. And because of that, I, I just want to obey him. I'm not by law restricted to that. But man, I, I, want, to, I want to do good by him. I want, I want to know that he is looking at me and going, yeah. That's my kid. That's my kid. I, I, I want this sermon to be a good one. Not because all of y'all, I hope you all will like it. But I really want at the end of this, I want God to say, poor Harold, you knocked it out of the park. They didn't get it. They didn't laugh. They didn't, they didn't. But amen, you did it. You're my boy. Folks, that's, that's what liberty is. Amen. No obligation. But it's also not license. It's just people who realize what Christ has done for us. And I love him for it. I want to serve him. And as I serve him, I want to love people. Hey, isn't that our, 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 our vision statement? Love God. Love people. And as a result of us being obedient to do those things, we are going to see lives changed. Amen? You've been called unto liberty. Conduct yourself in that way. And the way we do that, first and foremost, is that we receive Jesus into our hearts. So if you're here today or you're watching this program and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you are not free. You may be thinking you're doing fine and everything is great, but you are not free free because you cannot be free from any by any means except jesus so i want to encourage you today if you're feeling that there's emptiness and there's something missing in your life can i call ask you to call upon the name of jesus and be saved today receive him into your life you can do that right here right now you can do it at home wherever you are you can do it receive jesus and maybe you're here today and you you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but I've gotten so caught up in this life of freedom, this life of just license in my life. I've just been going out doing everything. And I, I thought it's okay with me and God, but boy, something in my spirit is speaking to me now. And I need to recommit my life to just serving him. Or maybe I've gotten judgmental and I've gotten this life of... Uh, of the idea of basically having this life of legalism and, 
man, I'm so wrapped up in stuff and it makes me mad and I can't see this. I can't enjoy this. I can't enjoy my Sunday school. I can't enjoy my small group. I can't enjoy worship because they're not doing it the way. And just, boy, something's just messed up in me. I want to be free, Pastor. You can be free today to celebrate freedom. I'd like you to bow your head as we get ready to, to wrap this thing up, man. Do you know Jesus? Ah, oh, do you know him? Oh, my friend, if you don't, would you, would you call upon his name right now? You don't need me. You don't need to come down front. But, man, you can do it right there where you are. Would you just call upon Jesus? Say, God, I know I need you. I've tried it for so long apart from you, but today I come to you. I want to receive you into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I claim Jesus as the true sacrifice, the only way to heaven. And I receive him into my life. God, forgive me. Would you call on that? Would you do that today, right now? Again, if you're here and you've gone to those either extremes of this Christian life that God has given us, and you sense that legalistic mentality, and you know it's hardened your heart, you know you haven't felt obedient, you've felt obligated, but I don't want to do that anymore. God, I want to be free. Free my heart from legalistic ideas. Or maybe you're on the other end and you say, man, I've been, I realize today, man, my life does not look sound in any way different than the world. But today, I want to get out of that pig pen. I've been in it far too long. I want out today. Thank you, God, for speaking that truth to my heart. Thank you, God. My friend, would you pray that this morning? And then we want to celebrate freedom. In just a second, we're going to ask you to stand. We're going to sing. I'll be down front if you, if you need to come. If you're at home, you call the church. Someone will be there to listen, visit with you, pray with you, whatever you can need. Father, hear our prayer today as we speak, speak to you, Lord, through our spirit. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we join back in praise and worship? But during this time, if you need to come, would you come this morning? Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battles won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. Amen. I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your
Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in Father, thank you, and I pray now, Lord, that we would celebrate anyone who made a decision during that time. Lord, we are confident in you, that you have never failed us, and you never will. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. We'll now ask everyone to please remain standing as the Buffalo Soldiers will now come and retrieve the colors. Thank you for coming today, and thank you for being a part of this great service, and I hope that you've, you've been encouraged, you've been uplifted, and that God has spoken to you and will allow us to all celebrate that great freedom. Amen? Just a couple of things very quickly. In your bulletin, there's a lot of things going on, so please look through there. A lot of, a lot of happening. Uh, one thing that's not happening is today we have the 5th through 8th grade and the 9th through 12th grade and a couple of groups are not meeting tonight. So there's only, I think, only one group that's, that's having theirs and so uh, they've already notified everybody. So there will be no other activities today. We want you to enjoy the 4th of July with your family, with your friends. Have a great day. Be safe and we'll love to see you back here uh, next week. All right? Well, let's pray and then we will be dismissed. Hey, uh, before I pray, some of you that we have two services, 
you haven't been in services together for a while, you might say hello to somebody, amen? If you haven't seen them in a while, we actually got to be together today. But thank you all for coming again. Choir, praise team, great job. Great job today. Proud of it. Let's pray and then we'll be dismissed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you again. We thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for the great time we had here this morning. I pray, Father, you'd be with everybody now as we leave from here and that everyone would be safe traveling if they're going to be with family or they are with family, everybody going home, that, Lord, you'd keep protection on them. We, again, thank you for our freedom. Thank you for our nation, for the men and women who sacrificed so much to be able to keep us free and those family members. And, Lord, just show them grace and mercy today. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And you're dismissed. Thank you. Thank you.